Hey, welcome. Nice to see you reading the Gospel of Mark together in the season of Lent. Five minutes or so at a time. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and some of the scribes arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw Jesus, they were immediately overcome with awe and they ran towards forward to greet him. And he said to them, what are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. Jesus answered them, Oh, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, he immediately convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and he rolled around, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, it has, been, it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus says to him, if you are able. All things can be done for those who believe. Immediately, the father, the child, cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you to come out of him and to never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, he came out and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said to them, This kind can only come out through prayer. Oh, wow. It's funny um, that Jesus is making some kind of distinction here about how he engages with healing. And you remember some of the other healing stories that we've gone through so far in the Gospel of Mark. Some are really very kinesthetic, right? Some are very physical, like he sticks his hands in his ears, he takes mud, you know, he cleans, he touches his tongue, he's, he's like, he's, he's, he's doing something. But here it's different. He's diagnostic, right? He he does ask, you know, how long has this happened to him? What's going on? And and the father tells a story, and it's a heartbreaking story. And then Jesus commands the demon to leave, right? It's not it's not prayer necessarily. He says, "Be gone," and the, the demon is gone. He speaks it out, but. And this is the interesting thing. Prayer is, um, well, it's really a powerful, powerful tool. Prayer allows us to form our heart. So there's a the kind of prayer where we memorize things like the Lord's Prayer. And we learn it by heart, right? And, and so the prayers we learn by heart. And over time, our life in the church and our life doing daily prayer, maybe we do hour by hour, maybe we do... Uh, like I do the morning office and then pretty soon we begin to memorize the prayers and, and, and that memorization actually forms us into a kind of person. Another kind of prayer which I also do daily is that quiet transcendental meditation, uh, the, the deep quiet prayer that you're just stilling your whole system. Maybe your mind runs around like a, a hamster on a wheel but, but it's stilling ourselves. Um, and uh, and, and, and these two different kinds of prayers sort of tap into two different powers. One is our character, which is our heart, how we are in relationship with our neighbor. And one is sort of that deeper pool, right? The uh, collective unconscious, maybe the, um, uh, uh, the life force, the, the thing, the Holy Spirit. And we sort of get into that and we move in, in it. It's, um, it's a mystical idea, really. But it's also powerful. 
of where we get outside of ourselves and look in to ourselves, right? Um, it's sort of seeing ourselves from the vantage point of our eternal soul. And, and, and I think what Jesus is saying here is it's because of that discipline in his life that allowed him to speak truth to evil, demonic distraction, right? power. And so prayer of the silent uh, meditative type, the deep stillness that allows us to access our soul, to get outside of ourselves, gives us the capacity to touch things that are beyond the capacity of our body. My prayer for you is that you pray, that you're a person of prayer, and that allows you to tap in to what's going on just a little bit beyond your cognitive senses, your physical senses, to that space that's a little bit bigger, because it's through that space that we can engage the kind of healing, the kind of relationship, soul to soul, that Jesus is talking about. Consider prayer. Consider the prayer that forms your heart. Consider the prayer by which you access your soul. Peace upon your soul.